This video is brought to you by LogRocket, the front-end performance monitor that records videos of user sessions along with logs and network data, surfacing problems and revealing the root cause of every bug. Try it today at LogRocket.com slash YT. Hey everybody, my name is Bryce Ayers and I'm a full-stack software engineer. I specialize in open source software and today we're going to be talking about Docker and how to set up Microsoft SQL Server to work in a Docker container. So to get started, make sure you head over to docker.com and if you don't already, click get started and then download Docker Desktop for Mac or for Windows, whichever one you have. Then also make sure you have a code editor of some sort or you can just use a notepad or whatever you prefer. This is what I prefer for editing code and working with uh, Docker Compose files. Also, make sure you have, for this tutorial, uh, Node.js installed, since we're going to write a small application to test our working Microsoft SQL Server. So if you haven't worked with Docker before, really cool technology. It's basically like a lightweight virtual machine that utilizes the resources of the underlying uh, operating system. So here we have the Microsoft SQL Server image. You can search for other images, MySQL, MongoDB, I mean, all kinds of things. Uh, you can find on there and then you can see all the feature tags that it has so if you want to use microsoft sql server that was the 2017 version or 2019 this one will use the 2019 latest version so let's go ahead and get into it so i'm just going to go over here and create a new directory And I'll just CD into that directory and I'm going to open it up in Visual Studio Code. Increase this here. All right, so let's go ahead and create a couple new files here. Create an index.js. And let me just remove this and hide this for now. And we'll create a Docker compose file. And that'll be a YAML file. So you can use Docker from a Docker file and run a particular Docker file, or you can use Docker compose, which basically creates an orchestration for you. So I'll show you here. There's a particular format we want to write this in. So first thing we got to do for our Docker Compose files, we did got to declare a version. So we'll say version 3.7, which is the latest currently. Um, and that'll just dictate kind of how this, the rest of the files laid out and how it's going to interpret it. And then we're going to say services. So services will be like your databases and things like that. And with YAML, everything's based on indentation. So make sure you are indenting. So we'll say SQL Server DB. So that's just the name of the service. And then we can reference that everywhere uh, that we're using it. And then we'd say container name. We'll say SQL Server DB, nothing crazy. This makes it easy to identify. And then for the image, if we go back over here, where did our website go? There it is. If we go back over here, we can see here is the image we want to pull. So now the version we want to use or the tag is the 2019 latest. So I'm just going to copy that. And I'll come back over here, type colon, latest. So this is the image we want to use. So this is basically the user account. This is their image and or image is here in a SQL server. And then the tag is 2019 latest that we want to use. So in addition to this, we need to expose some ports. So type ports and then indent dash. And we need to expose our local port to an internal port within the Docker container. So we'll do 1433 since that's the default port. So you can see here our local port mapping maps to the internal port here within the container. And then we need to set the environment variables and SA password. 
And if you're wondering where I'm getting this from, if you scroll down here, you can see requirements. It'll say accept EULA with a Y, SA password, your strong password, and SA is a system administrator, accept EULA is an end user license agreement. So we'll just go ahead and set those. Looks like this one has a default value, so we don't need that one. Um, SA, oops. So our password, let's just set it to password, which we don't want to do in production, but we'll be maybe okay here. We'll see. Except EULA and we'll type Y. Perfect. So make sure you have Docker installed. So we can type Docker dash V. And if you install that Docker desktop, I uh, should be able to type Docker compose dash V. Perfect. So we have Docker installed. So from here we can say docker compose ps. Invalid, unsupported, config, posts. Oh, typo, ports. There we go. So we type docker compose ps. We see we have nothing running currently. Let me clear that. And from there, what we can do is type docker compose up dash D for daemon, so it'll run in the background. And if this is your first time installing this image, you'll see a bunch of like download arrows showing it's downloading the image from Docker Hub. Docker Hub's the default. You can point to other private repositories or public repositories, but there's a little more configuration outside the scope of this tutorial. So that's done. It's pulling it from our cache now. So now we can type Docker compose ps and we can see the name we see the command and we see an exit code exit one so that's not good so pose logs i believe it is and we can look in here and we can see the logs and we see an error unable to set system administrator password password validation failed the password does not meet the sql server policy requirements so Apparently password's not a good password. So maybe we type super duper password. And I'm gonna type docker compose down. So we can stop that image. So now we have nothing running. So now if I go and do docker compose up dash D again. And let's see if it's running. Looks like it's up. Let me just check it one more time, make sure it's still up. Perfect. So it looks like we're good. And you can see 000 as our local host uh, port 1433 is mapping to the internal port of 1433. So now we can clear this. Now let's go over to our index.js file that we had created. And real quick here, I'm just gonna create a small program. Um, so before we get started, make sure you have uh, NPM installed. Perfect. Uh, so any version over 5.2 should be fine for this. Um, and then we just want to go npm install dash dash save msql. And you could use anything. It doesn't have to be Node.js, whatever you want to connect to your database with. Perfect. So let me clear this. So now let's go grab that package we just installed which allows the interface with our database. And I'm just gonna set up some basic config to connect to our database. So we'll say user, we're just gonna use that system administrator user. Password, what do we set our password to? Super duper password, good enough. Server, we'll say local host. And you can go to this, basically this package's documentation to see what all this config stuff is I'm adding here. But for time's sake, we'll just punch it in here. And I wanna to connect to a database called testdb, which we'll need to create. And I'm just gonna set some quick options here. Since you'll get an error if you don't set this. And we'll just set it to true for now. Perfect. Come down here and type const run 
equals, and we'll make this an asynchronous function. And we'll say try, and I'm gonna say console log. And we're gonna open our connection. So we have to say const pool equals, we'll say await, since it's a promise. Pass in our config. Nope, not that. Connect. Next, I'll say const. And I'll destructure this record set. And we'll await our basic query here. We'll say sql.query. And we'll do just do a string literal. I'll say select all from users. So we've got to create a users table. And then we just want to console log what comes back. And then we'll just close our, con actually, I'll wait here. Instead of closing it right away, um, I'll do catch error. And we just want to print out the error so we can see it. And then we'll do finally, we want to close our connection, say pool.close. And then we'll say console log connection closed. So perfect. Then we just need to call our run. So what happens if we type node index.js? Oh, misspelled async here. There we go. So we get a connection error, failed to log in for user. So having a problem there connecting to our database. So let's go into our database. And what we want to do is type docker execute dash it SQL server DB. So that's the name we gave to our Docker image and we'll type bash. So now we're in the bash terminal for Microsoft SQL and type ls, you can see all these directories. So I know where the directory is, so it should be opt. Tools, bin, and then SQL CMD. We type s local host dash u for the user. We'll type sa and dash p, say super duper password and we're in. So now I should be able to type select name from sys.databases and type go. And we can see our databases here. We have four. So we don't actually have that database, that test DB that we, we set up here. So we need to create that database. And I think you just type databases too. Nope, okay, maybe not. Dot databases. Okay, you actually gotta type sys. Um, so let's go ahead and create our database. So we'll say create database test db. Go. So now if we do select name from that, type go, we see we have that test db in there, perfect. So now let's say use test DB. We changed our database we're currently using to that. So now we can say create table users, say ID, we'll make an int field, we'll say name, say it's a varchar of 50 characters. And we'll say email is another varchar of, we'll just say 255. Type go, 
So that should have been created. So now let's insert it into our users table. Um, type insert into users values, say one, let's type Bill Gates, will be our user's name. And we'll say bill.gates at microsoft.com. Type go, one row is affected. So now if we type select all from users, we have one user record coming back, Bill Gates. Perfect. So I type uh, control C to exit out and control D to finally fully exit out. So now if we go back and we run our Node.js script, pools not defined, to have a typo in here. Oh, because it's defined. So let me do this. That pool. And I'll sign it. There we go. It was just saying it couldn't actually see pool down here because it's within these braces. So let's try that again. Perfect. So connections opened. We see one user record came back of one. Bill Gates, email, Bill Gates, Microsoft. So now we have our Docker Compose database is fully running. We've exposed the ports. We're connecting to it and pulling data and then disconnecting. So then we type docker compose ps. We see our database service is still up. And all we have to do is just within the directory of our docker, docker compose file, it's just type docker compose down. And then we just check it again, docker compose ps, and it's all cleaned up. So that is the tutorial. That's how you can set it up. Um, you can definitely do more complicated stuff in here as well as automatically connect and reference uh, these different variables for services. Uh, but we can get into that next time. So thanks for watching and take care.